Have you ever been able to simultaneously remember something super vividly and then almost not at all at the same time? Well, I can tell you that I absolutely have, and today we're talking about something that I am so happy to finally be able to talk about because I have been trying to find this game for years. I mean, seriously, I'm ecstatic, and I, I don't even care if this video gets like 10 views because this is just going to be so much fun for me. So strap on your nostalgia goggles because that's what we're talking about today. Hey there all you video gaming good taste having, more deserving than what you're getting compadres. Welcome to the Milky Donut. As I already said, for years I could not for the life of me figure out enough about this game to be able to find it. The only memory clues I could seem to dig up were vague memories of windmills, and I couldn't even remember if you played as an animal or a human, and my brain for some reason kept wanting to relate it to Sonic, but I knew that wasn't it. I could remember the occasional rainstorm and some sound effects that you can hear in your brain, but also couldn't? You know what I mean, and it, it frustrated me for years. Because I had such fond memories and feelings about playing this mystery game when I was nothing more than a little baby Milky. Well, after hours of googling random words that I thought maybe had something to do with it, like PlayStation 1 side-scrollers, which I couldn't even remember if it was actually a side-scroller, I just vaguely remember walking sideways, so I went with it. Searches like PlayStation game with windmills, digging through Reddit threads, and finally, I finally found what I had been yearning to find. Seeing a low-poly picture that triggered the buried memories from years ago. That game being Klonoa, Door to Phantom Isle. I can't even tell you how happy I am to finally have found this game and to it just it finally scratch that nostalgia itch that's been bugging me for years. This was legitimately one of my favorite games I had, had ever played as a kid. And that being said, you, you'd think I'd be able to remember more about it, but nope. I don't exactly know how I let the memories get so suppressed, and I don't even remember when or why I stopped playing it. All I remember is spending hours and hours playing it, engraving the playful music into my brain, taking in the beautiful platforming world it took place in. I could have sworn it was one of those demo discs for the PlayStation 1 because I spent way too much time playing those. But after hours of looking through demo discs on YouTube, I finally gave up. So today, I have the pleasure of exploring what this game is with you guys, why it was so good, and show some love for a game that I personally believe was one of the best games to ever release for the PlayStation 1. So for those of you who have never heard of this game, we're gonna dive into what this game is because before researching for this video, I honestly didn't even know what this game was about. I just vaguely remembered the gameplay and dumping hours of my 7 year old life into it. I actually don't even really remember how old I was, but it had to be sometime around there. Well, in 1997, Namco introduced a platformer game for the PlayStation, marking the inception of the Klonoa series, titled Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle. The game embarks players on a journey alongside Klonoa and his companion Hugh Pao, endeavoring to rescue the dream realm of Phantom Isle from a malevolent force set on transforming it into a realm of nightmares. Players navigate Klonoa Noah through a 2.5D perspective, where stages are visually rendered in three dimensions while movement is confined to a 2D path. Klonoa's abilities include seizing foes to hurl them as projectiles or utilizing them as springboards for vertical travel. Under the direction of Hideo Yoshizawa, the game's concept was fashioned as a dreamlike world with broad appeal across all age groups. Klonoa's character was crafted early in development, shaping the design of the environments and additional characters that surrounded him. Door to Phantom Mile garnered acclaim for its inventive platforming, striking visuals, and engaging cutscenes. However, some critics noted a perceived lack of innovation in gameplay, and an excessive of Japanese, I guess what you would call, cuteness. Nevertheless, it has retrospectively earned a recognition as one of the premier 2.5D platformers and standout PlayStation titles. The success of the original apparently birthed a direct sequel, Klonoa 2 Lunate is Veil, released for the PlayStation 2 in 2001, followed by various other installments which I had absolutely no idea about. Notably, the game received two remakes, one in 2008 for the Nintendo Wii and another one in 2022. Alongside a reimagining of Klonoa 2 as part of the Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series compilation, accessible across multiple platforms. The game is similar to other platformers of its time, but standing out among the others due to its friendly, colorful aesthetic and atmosphere that many Japanese-made games of the genre possessed. 
And now that I've finally watched gameplay videos of it, and my memories have been unlocked, I remember loving the mechanic of being able to use enemies to get a high jump while also using them as projectiles to take out enemies you may encounter. It almost reminds me of Kirby in a way, but putting its own unique spin on it. And I still think the art style is beautiful and inviting and the music inspires a lighthearted and dreamlike experience. Living in the era of gaming that we currently live in, where studios and developers focus so much on graphics and high performance, it often overshadows uniqueness and personality. Not every single game has to be hyper realistic to be a good game. And I think that's part of why Nintendo is so successful. Not only do they have an audience base that goes all the way from young kids to older adults, but they also prioritize character and soul, often making up for the lack of next-gen graphics with beautiful art styles. Every game looks polished and has a clear vision. The era of the Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and leading into the PlayStation 2 was a very experimental phase for the world of gaming, which inevitably led to some not-so-good games, but also giving birth to many unique games that had their own identities. There really was no set standard for gaming yet. Gaming wasn't nearly as mainstream. Studios didn't have to try to appeal to every gamer that they might be able to suckle a sale out of, which is one of the reasons why I believe gaming felt so different back then. Klonoa is a time-based game where you can collect little clocks floating in bubbles to add more time to your level time counter, encountering little orange and purple Pokemons while trying to collect as many green diamonds as you can. Watching gameplay of this game was like almost too much nostalgia. I almost died. Legit, it was one of the best feelings I've ever ever had rediscovering something from my childhood. The levels, or visions as they're called in this game, have a variety of aesthetics. Different weather, cool ass mine sections with sparkles on the walls that also made me die when I saw them because I totally forgot about them. Each level leads to a boss fight to finish them out, and to be honest, I don't actually remember how difficult this game is. I do remember stressing while playing it and getting frustrated a lot, but I was young and probably just sucked at it. Nevertheless, this game was amazing and a big part of my childhood. And if this game could get like a remaster for PlayStation 5, oh man, I can only wish. I know I got one for the Switch, but it would just be cool to see it go back to its PlayStation roots. Ugh. Hey there, uh, future editing Melky here. Uh, they, they did release it on the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, which I ended up using clips of in this video. I actually recorded that part before I did the uh, full research on where they released it. So yeah, ignore me being an idiot. And it would be cool to see some of the older, lesser-known games get some love that they greatly deserve and maybe get a shot at the fan base that they also deserve. I honestly would buy a PlayStation just to play the original version of this game again. But I'm definitely going to get the Switch version, and if you remember this game, leave a comment saying what you think about it, and if you enjoyed it as much as I did. Or maybe you hated it, and I just have a bad taste in games. Either way, let me know. This game is absolutely a certified glazer, and like I've said 10 times already, I'm just so glad that I rediscovered this classic and get to talk about it with all of you guys. Maybe this will even dig up some of other people's buried memories of this game. Let me know in the comments if you like this style of video, I'd like to make a section of videos where we explore some older or lesser known games that maybe have been forgotten and deserve some more light. And I've never played the remastered version for the Switch yet, but if you've never heard of this game and you'd like to try it out, I would highly recommend getting the remastered version and just seeing how it is. Is. Give it a shot. Again, let me know if you like this style of video. I really want to kind of branch off into some different things and talk about what I really do love, and that's just good games. But that's going to do it for this video, and it was good to talk with you guys again, especially about something that I'm just, I was so happy to find, and I just immediately wrote this script when I found the game. So if you enjoyed this video, consider giving us a nice subscribe, a like, and a share. Stay milky, and I'll see you next time on the Milky Donut.